All right, this problem should be a lot of fun. And um, I think I know the way that they probably want this to be done, but it's not really the best way to do it. Um, with 4B, what they're asking is that you have you know, sales guys and they have sales each month and, or, or an amount of sales that they've made each month. And they want you to be able to keep inputting their ID and how much they did in sales that month. And so you can kind of count how many, you know, go through all the sales reps you have and, you know, and uh, display only the guys that made over a certain amount or sold over a certain amount of policies that month. So, you know, the, as the manager, you'll kind of go into your computer and you'll say this guy and then how many sales he did, then the next guy and how many sales he did and so on and so forth until you enter like a certain value or, you know, a zero maybe, and then it'll exit. Um, it does say that it it wants a list of those people, and technically, the the first way I'll show you, you do technically get a list, but it's not like presented at the end. And since there's no commas in the book, I'm assuming that you know you can make a case for hey, this list can be you know outputted at any time. You don't have to output the whole thing at the end. Um, you can be putting out the data each time the loop runs because we're going to use a loop. You can make a case for that because they didn't put a comma in that to stress that we want the list at the end. So not being specific, you've got a little bit of a wiggle worm probably. Um, so the first way we're going to ask the user for an ID, and this will be the salesperson's ID, and while you don't enter a zero, you're going to go into the loop and ask for that person's sales for the month. And now only when they are over a certain amount of sales, I've said 30, the book has something different, only when they've gone over, over that amount are you going to display their work and congratulate them. So we have output and I've got a header you know, for that and um, ID, so it would be header one is employee, so employee ID number sold however many sales policies they sold, policies this month. And then you end if, and then you ask for them to enter the ID again so you can check to make sure you don't want to exit the program yet. If you do hit a zero, you've, you've gone through all your sales guys, and you know each time you go through the loop, you're saying, oh, this guy sold this much, or if they didn't sell enough, you, it doesn't say anything. They don't get recognized for it. But when you put a zero in, it'll end. So that's the first way. And let's go over to the flowchart real fast. So it looks like this. Start, output, you know, enter ID. Then you got a place to do that. While it's not zero, because if it is, you're just going to end the program. You're done. Um, so if it's not zero, you ask for that person's sales. And if it's greater than 30, you're going to display their work and they get recognized for it. If that's false, then you just ask for another ID and move on. And then we go right back around to check if that's zero or not. So that's how the flow chart for this first one will look. And that's probably what they're asking for because I don't think we've gone through a raise yet. But uh, the best way to do it, I think, is having it to output all the results at the end. And um, especially having it in descending order, greatest to least. Uh, that part I have not figured out yet, but I think I have a good idea on how to do that. Um, so that, that'll be coming probably in an extras video, but I do have it to where it's outputting a list at the end. And so what you would do is, I've set this up with a do while loop. So you'd start, do, you know, um, ID, and I'll show you the program up here. It'll make a little bit more sense when we go through what variables we need to declare. But basically you've got your ID array here. And each time you go through this loop, you're going to use this counter to go to the next element in that array. So an array holds a certain number of slots, and each slot you're going to put a value in it. And that value in the first slot will be whatever you enter here. So ID will equal this first slot in the ID array. Next time you go around, see this plus plus, it increments by one, so you're going to be assigning the, whatever you type in here, 
the next time around to the next slot in the array, the ID array. So do this and then assign it to a slot, which would be the first one. It would be ID array and then zero technically. And then the next one would be one. But we have if ID is not equal to zero, then we're going to ask for the sales. Because remember, if we type in a zero, we want to be able to exit immediately. So we want to bypass this if we have zero. So we're going to say if the ID is not equal to zero, then we can ask for the sales. And the same thing goes with the sales. Sales array. We've got sales and we've got this sales counter that's going to increment by one each time we go through. So in this sales array, we're going to assign sales to the first slot in that array. The next time we come around, it's going to be assigned to the second slot because we're incrementing by one. And so anyway, we end if, and then while ID is not equal to zero, and that ends the loop. So a do while is do all of this, and then while, you know, ID is not equal to zero. While comes at the end. And then after we exit this while, or do while loop, <clears throat> we've got a place where we can output our header one and header two, and it's basically just employee and sales. I've declared those up top, and I'll show you that in a minute. <clears throat> now this is where we output our, our table, like all of our results, at the end as a list. And we're going to use a for loop for that. So we've got for i, and now i, what that is, is that <clears throat> that is one specific slot in an array. And so if you can imagine that i is going to be equal to zero, so if we have id, uh, let's see, id array here, then i would be starting at zero. So it's the first slot in that array. So for the first slot, or for basically i equaling zero, and i not being greater than the counter, so however many slots we have in that array, we don't want to go over that. And then we're going to increment that, you know, each slot by one. So we're going to move along to each slot in the array, each index, each element in the array. We're going to keep moving on by one every time we run this. So we can output the next, you know, uh, whatever is contained in the next slot in that array. So if sales um, array, whatever slot that might be, so we could be on zero here or one or two, if that specific slot in the array is greater than 30, then we're going to recognize that person. So output the ID array, whatever slot that might be, so whatever ID, whoever that is, and their sales, you know, whatever uh, their sales is. And this is, they're going to stay, you know, paired because we're starting I at zero. You know, sales array I is not starting at two, you know. That person, you know, sale ID array zero did not sell sales array two. He sold sales array zero. Zero, zero. And say we've got... Um, you know, I starting at zero. So we can apply this I to both places because I just means, you know, that specific, um, you know, index, <clears throat> whether it be zero, one, two, three, however many, many we have. And then end if, end for, stop. So I hope that made a little bit of sense there with the arrays. Um, it's a little bit to wrap your head around at first, but once you get it, it starts to make a little bit more sense. Uh, let's go to the flow chart real fast. So I can show you how that looks for setting up the array and everything. We've got start and then um, input ID. And actually this, let's move that up here. This should actually be over here because we have do and then, you know, all that stuff goes inside of the array or inside of the uh, do while. So this is where our do starts, input ID. Now we've got this uh, right here. And actually, take note that if you are going to use, you know, whenever you do this part, the ID needs to come after this little, you know, equation here, or else it messes up. 
and I'll show you that in the code. <clears throat> so if ID is not equal to zero, then we're going to ask for the sales, input sales, you know, and then we do our little equation for sales, and we need to adjust this as well. I made this one. I didn't realize that this actually did matter. <laughs> it's um, it has to come after. Sales needs to come after that. And so while ID is not equal to zero. And then, you know, we keep going through that loop. But if we do hit a zero, then we're going to put our headers out. And then we're going to output our information in a list. So for I equaling to zero, I not e exceeding ID counter, then we're going to keep going through each slot in the array. And that applies to both arrays, by the way. So if sales is greater than 30, then we recognize the person. Otherwise, we go back and we check for the next slot in both arrays, the corresponding arrays. And once we finish this, once we've gotten to all, you know, through all of the inputs that we've put in, then we get we go to uh, stop here. So let's go to the code and let me show you how this works. I've got this first way here, probably what they want because I don't think we've gone through arrays yet in the book at this point. Um, so let me go through the uh, declarations here. So here are headers, pretty simple. Employee and sales, I want to have a nice table layout. And you can see I've got I here. This is for one specific spot in the array. And this can apply to any of those spots. It's just a, a placeholder. It can mean 0, 1, 2, 3, so it can be, you know, the eye can be in here. This is where the eye is, is going. And it could be any one of those 10. Uh, and I could also make these arrays 200 slots. You know, I could make it so I could have 200 in there. Um, so then we've got a, a variable for ID. This is where we're going to be able to put in, you know, our ID and then as well as sales. Now this is our counter for the ID. And, you know, I've just put zero here to start. But that's a um, yeah, counter for array, not each array. That's the counter for that specific, you know, the, for the ID array. And this is the counter for the sales array. So we do need to have a, you know, placeholder kind of thing here um, for each specific slot in each array. We need to have a counter for each array and we need to have the arrays themselves. So we've got an ID array and a sales array. So I haven't declared, you know, what's going to be inside of those arrays up here because we're, we're leaving that up to the user because he's going to enter an ID. Now, this is the, this is the first, uh, we're not going to go to the uh, arrays with this one. This is the first route you can do. So this is what that code would look like is it's ID while ID is not equal to zero, enter sales, and if sales is greater than 30, recognize the person, then check for the ID again, and loop back around, or exit the program so it would be return zero down here. So that's the first way in the code. This is the one using the arrays. So I'd have do, then enter the ID, and then we're going to assign whatever you enter to the first slot in our ID array. Now if ID is not equal to zero, we're going to go in and ask for the sales for that person. And then we're going to assign whatever we type in there to the first slot in the sales array. And then it's going to check while ID is not equal to zero. So if you hit zero up here, it's going to know it down here and it's going to exit immediately. Now I've just put a space in between there to make you know, the list that we're going to output here a little nicer to read. So I output the first heading which is employee and I want a little bit of space between that and the second heading which is sales. And then we have a for loop to output our information, everything that we've typed in at this point. So for each array um, starting at the first slot and that and you know, uh, 
the next slot and the next slot not exceeding, we're not going to go over the counter minus one. The reason I did that is because when you type in a zero at the end to exit the program, if this is declared at 20 or less, you're going to notice that your output has a zero and a weird string of numbers after it. And, and so what this does is it takes care of that last entry, that zero that you type in. So also, you know, each time we go through this, we're going to move to the next slot in the array to output whatever's in there, the next sales employee and his sales, you know, and so on and so forth, the next one and his sales. And so if sales, whatever that slot is, is greater than 30, then they get recognized. And we're going to output that specific slot, so that specific employee and his specific sales. You know, because each time we go through the loop, this might be two. This might be three or four. So we keep going around until we hit the counter. You know, so every time we've gone through this do while here, it's, it's a, you know, doing this counter here. So, you know, in this counter here, so we're not going to exceed however much is stored in that. And then we end. So just kind of look that over and really, really get a feel for it, understand what's going on there. Um, if you just kind of go line by line, and if you type it out, start manipulating things, you sort of get a feel for how everything's working and why it works the way it does. So I hope I've explained what's going on here. And let's run the program real fast. I think this is turning into a long video. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, now, this is starting off at the first one here. So... I'll show you how that works. Um, ID, say five, sales, they went over that 30 mark. They got 67 policies this month. And see, gives you your little, uh, you know, employee five sold that much. So we're, we're displaying a list here. You know, we're, we're having it output information. Uh, let's do employee six. Uh, they sold 21. See, they don't get recognized. Now I'm going to hit zero and I'm going to exit that first one there. So typically this would say in program, but I'm going to show you the array and what this does, how that code works. So ID, uh, let's do five, uh, 78 policies. Um, I'm going to clear this real fast. Uh, so ID again, three. Their sales, uh, 34, 7, um, maybe a 21 again. Uh, let's do an 8. This person did 90. And now we're going to exit. Let me show you how this array works. So 0 to exit. And so you can see that once I went into that, uh, the, the array part right there, we've got 3 you know, 34 here. Uh, there was one before that. And then we've got, so we've got one, two, three, four. So there should be four people that I typed in for that second way to do things. But we're only getting three outputs here because remember, they don't get recognized if they go below, you know, 30 and below. So this person, employee number seven, 21, he doesn't get recognized. So we've got this nice little table layout here, a list employee you know numbers and their sales now at some point I will I will put up a video probably to get this going and you know from greatest to least going down the column here um, but at this point it's been a headache of a time trying to find that and there's a lot of information out there most of it's just really difficult to understand and going through that will be a hassle but um, I will get that up at some point so anyway I hope this uh, has cleared up some you know two different ways to do it you can decide which way you want to do it I'm pretty positive the book would probably want you to do something like this uh, unless I'm missing something and there is a way to output everything at the end um, it's just reading up on these arrays has melted my brain and uh, you'll have to forgive me for that but anyway thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video